Welcome to another DCS tutorial and today we are going to be looking at synthetic aperture radar scintillation on the Strike Eagle. So what exactly is this? Well a synthetic aperture radar is a form of radar used to create 2D images or 3D reconstructions of objects such as terrain. However, it's for scintillation which we're really interested in here, as many people are not aware of it. Scintillation means a flash or a sparkle, usually of light, but could be any form of radiation, such as radar. And in radar, this sparkle or flash occurs when the radar beam is reflected off an object and the amplitude of the return changes in a pulsing manner. So what causes this? The usual answer is returns from things that rotate. As a consequence of this rotation, the position of the return tends to wander slightly from its mean position as well. Now you're probably thinking how the hell this helps you in DCS. And the simple answer is locating radars. Radars often have a large spinning dish if you imagine a lighthouse where the light bulb is removed and replaced by your radar, you can see that there will be virtually no reflection when the dish points away from you and a very strong return when it's pointing directly at you. And this causes bright flashes on your radar, just like a lighthouse. If you've not seen this in DCS, it's probably for one of two reasons. First of all, it's only modelled in the F-15E and secondly, it's only shown if you activate it in the special options menu, as we can see here. This is probably because it's a potential performance hit, though I've not seen a noticeable impact. But I also think because it's seemingly not operating 100% as it should. However, it is very useful. I'm going to show two attacks. The first is using scintillation to find and target an SA-11 search radar, and then using scintillation to locate an SA-3 search radar, and then hand over to a lantern pod to hit its track radar. So well, first of all, we'll bring up our weapons page and we're going to select ourselves uh, a JDAM, a GBU-31. Okay, now let's go to the uh, to ground radar. Make it soy with castle left long. Now we need to offset a few degrees uh, to allow mapping. We're going to change the scale to 4.7 miles, which is the largest scale where scintillation is visible. Um, and then put that roughly where the target is, and uh, TDC action, and we'll create a map. Okay, there's a map, and underneath the circle you can just about make out the scintillation, which is showing as a horizontal line. And it's gone a little bit brighter now. It does kind of fluctuate. We want to zoom in as close as possible, but we can't actually uh, do so until we are within 40 miles. We're currently on uh, 42 miles. Forty one. Okay, now let's uh, get a, a close in map. Okay, we're we'll ready in five seconds. Okay, and uh, now that's uh, standing out like a sore thumb. That is the scintillation. As I said, it's a bit like a lighthouse. Just uh, centralise that. There you can see all of the uh, sand battery there. 
uh, obviously the uh, scintillation is coming from the snow drift. We'll uh, designate that target and we'll uh, transfer the coordinates um, on the smart weapons page. So we are ready to go. Okay, let's turn towards the target, but I'm not going to point straight at it as we have two GBU 31s at 31,000. I can release at about 20 miles, which is just inside the range of the SA 11. So I'm going to offset slightly so the SAM doesn't fire quite so early and turn directly on target as late as I can. Now look what's just happened. We now have four more radars, which tells us that this site has four launchers, and all four are now painting us, and a launch is imminent. We're right on the edge of our own drop range, so let's point straight at them, drop our bomb, and get the hell out of Dodge. One jade I'm away, and we have an SA-11 inbound as well, so let's turn away. Let's drag the missile to the west, and it's going to perform a lead pursuit. to continue the turn south, forcing the missile to turn again and bleeding all of its energy. And we should be perfectly safe now, but you should never be complacent. I forgot to mention earlier that sometimes the scintillation is too bright, making it difficult to get an accurate target designation. If that's the case, then just wait for it to refresh as the scintillation usually fluctuates. And shack. Okay, so we're back on board. Uh, this time we're going to engage an SA-3. Now we could do as before and attack the search radar. However, with an SA-3, the key target is the track radar, which will only reveal itself just before launch. So what I'm going to do is use the scintillation to find the site itself and then use the radar to cue the lantern pod and then use that to visually locate and designate the track radar. So we'll start as before by going to our armament page uh, to ground and selecting a GBU-31. We'll go to Earth to ground master mode and master arm on. And then we're going to bring up the Earth to ground radar again. Set the range to 40 miles. And then let's roll off target and make radar soy using castle left long. And then we're going to set our scale once again and create an initial map. While that's uh, generating a map, we'll bring up the teapod or the other MFD. Okay, we can see a radar there. That's going to be our SA3 search radar. So we're going to target that. And that's designated. So we know roughly where the site is. And that's all we need for the radar for now. So we can get rid of the radar. And we'll bring up our smart weapons page, ready for later. And let's make our teapod soy. 
using castle right long. Okay, let's uh, zoom in on that and see what we can see. And the answer is not a great deal. Um, if we transfer that data to the uh, bomb, we'll get some ranging information. So 22 miles. Now, the Lancer pod on the F-15 isn't the best. In fact, it's probably the worst one in uh, DCS. So we're not really going to see a great picture until we're down to 15 miles at best, maybe as little as 10 miles. But what we can do to improve things a little bit is if we increase brightness and contrast, we can at least see some items now. So we've got um, three units here, four units, which are probably going to be the launchers. We've got something a bit brighter over here, which I think is likely to be the search radar. We might have something here. Oh, we've got a couple of units uh, around the periphery. So now it's just a case of uh, finding the track radar and it's going to be a little bit difficult until we get a little bit closer still. Now notice that I'm um, 40 odd degrees uh, off both sides. I don't want to approach uh, too quickly. Uh, actually there is something appearing there. That might be the track radar. Okay, I'm just going to designate that and transfer the coordinates again just in case. Yeah, that is looking like it is the track radar. That's definitely the search radar there. Okay, 12 miles. Okay, a final designation, a final transfer. Okay, I'm going to accelerate. And I'm going to roll onto target. Okay, we're in range and bomb away. And we can roll off target. And shack. That wraps up today's tutorial. So if you learned anything new, please do hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.